Welcome to the DZ Easy Show. I'm Eric Rangel, reminding you to be positive as we explore the ideas of Ted Nelson and dream about building a better metaverse. today's episode, we are going to create a test case for a decentralized version of Ted Nelson's ZZ structure. And we're going to use this prototype where you could uh, download here the ZZ starter kit and you'll get ZigZag GZZ, which um, you can use to follow along with the example we're going to build. The test case we're going to build is how to store information about patterns in the game of life. So here is an example of the game of life running where it just follows simple rules for every cell. And then as the generations advance, you get interesting patterns like this glider and above is a glider gun. We're gonna start with a simple example which can actually be emulated on the Internet Archive at archive.org slash details slash VN Conway. Conway is the inventor of the Game of Life, which uh, came from an article. It was published in uh, Scientific American in 1970, where it was first introduced to the world. So I'm booting an Apple IIe disk image in archive.org. Okay, we're back in 1983, Apple DOS, and it is ex executing a text file, which is running an AppleSoft basic program, which simulates a von Neumann machine. And now it is going to load the program that I developed with numbers and uh, these 10 opcodes, and I'm just gonna run it for you. Um, so here is the data. We're going to take a three by three grid of numbers, either zero or one, and figure out how many neighbors each number has. So I'm going to modify memory first and create a nice little life pattern. Okay, so address 17, I want a zero, and address 19, I want a zero, and uh, 28, and 29. So this code image is designed to read a three by three block of um, cells in the game of life. And in this example, I have the glider pattern in these cells that are marked with a one. And all that this program is gonna do is calculate the number of neighbors for each cell. So I'm gonna run it. And um, the uh, next generation of this pattern is based on the number of neighbors each cell has. So it's using an algorithm, which is defined by these instructions and all these numbers to calculate the number of neighbors. So this middle cell has one, two, three, four, five neighbors. The bottom cell here has three neighbors. This one only has one neighbor. And then the rules of the game are, if you are alive and you have two or three neighbors, you will survive to the next generation. If you're not alive, but you have exactly three neighbors, you will be born in the next generation. So this program is uh, going through and it turns out you only need to calculate this diamond for this three by three grid. Okay, so now the program just stopped and then you have to manually evaluate the rules so to figure out which cells will survive to the next generation. Okay. So looking at the results of this, um, this cell here only has one neighbor, so it's going to die. So I'm gonna modify address 18 to be a zero. Okay, um, this cell is alive and it has two, it has three neighbors. This one has two neighbors, it'll stay alive, but this cell over here is gonna die. Okay, so then um, 39, we'll get a zero. But 
this cell uh, down here has exactly three neighbors. Now this cell here is dead, but it has exactly three neighbors, so it's going to come alive. 29, 1. The game of life is a mathematical abstraction, and it is played on an infinite grid of cells. Well, here we have nine cells, but the next generation can only affect cells within this diamond. So if we think about nine, which is three by three, and five by five, or 25, then we would add uh, two to the length and square it to figure out the number of cells that we would need to calculate. So a five by five grid, we'd need a seven by seven grid and to calculate around, but we don't have to calculate the corners. So if you think about it, this three by three, to go to from three by three to five by five, it's like having a snake. So like if we numbered our cells here, starting in the middle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we go out to eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, up to 25, it's like a snake going around and around, and that could be a linear structure, and that's what we're gonna model in zigzag, how we could theoretically calculate an infinite grid of the game of life. So the cell below this one will get a one, and um, this is the pattern that we are going to see in the next generation. So if you wanted to play it out on this grid, you would move everything up one. So we would put um, in 17 a one, and then 19 a one, and then we move this row up to the second row. So we're going to set uh, 28 to a one, and 29 to a zero. And then the third row, we would have that one cell down here. So we're going to make 37 into a zero and leave that one. So that's the pattern for the second generation. And then we could run it again, oops, and then calculate the third generation. Okay, and it turns out that the third generation is a glider in a different orientation. So what we want to have in our ZZ structure is all the data necessary to calculate uh, from one generation to the next generation of a cell, group of cells defined in a snake pattern. Okay, so this is the GZZ prototype. And um, what I did is open up the edit hack by typing nine capital G enter, and that gives me a place to edit the contents of the blue cell. So if I type my name in here, it goes into the contents of that cell. Okay, but I'm gonna hit escape, because what we want to do is um, create our own little test case area. So I'm gonna create a new cell above the royal families of Europe and I'm going to name it uh, Conway. So I'm gonna type in here, Conway, G-O-L, Game of Life. So that's the test case that I wanna create. And now I'm gonna create a new cell to the right of it. So I have to click in here, new L, and now I can start um, with a little clean slate to define my dimensions and um, any documentation, but uh, the first, dimension that I'm thinking of is a snake. So D dot snake. Now that's not actually creating a dimension in zigzag. To do that, I'm going to hit escape and go down to the dimension lists. Now you need D1, 2, and 3, but what I'm going to do is insert above D date. So I'm going to create a new cell above it, and I'm going to call this one Let's call it uh, d.gol.snake. And I'm using gol as a namespace for game of life. That will tell me, that, that'll differentiate between my dimensions and the standard dimensions that are already in the system. Now let's create a new cell below it. And um, we're gonna have like a horizontal and vertical view. So I'm gonna just call it um, d. Go 
that x axis and another dimension d goal dot y axis. Okay, because I want them to be independent of the standard dimensions. I consider those useful just for navigating to find your stuff. And let me add those dimensions to it below. Okay, so for consistency, I should rename these to. So this cell I'm going to name d.gol.xaxis. Okay, and then I'm going to go up here, rename this just to put the namespace in. Okay, and go down. Okay, I inserted in the middle, and I actually want that below it. I'm going to do a hop. So hop this cell over the one below it, and it goes down there. And I'm going to do a D goal dot Y axis. Okay, so let's start with the snake. Well, we're going to start in the middle cell, which would be the 0, comma 0 in Cartesian coordinates. Um, but I'm just going to use natural numbers, so I'm going to make a new cell to the right of it. Okay. So actually, yeah, I want um, these are the cells that are going to be on the dimension. So right now I'm putting them on D1, but I'm going to put them on the D goal snake. So let's start with the number one. Let's just do one through nine. Okay, a nine cell snake. Okay, then we'll go to two. Actually, I'm going to put the numbers one through 25, and then we'll uh, work with that. Okay, so we've just created 25 cells, but they're all on dimension one. They're not on the snake dimension yet. So the, the next thing I want to do is connect this cell one to the snake dimension. Actually, what I want to do is connect this cell from D1 to this cell one, but in the snake dimension. Okay, so what I've done here is put the um, green cursor on the cell one, which is currently in dimension one, and I changed the x-axis here to dimension game of life snake, and I want to connect this cell to this cell. So I do a slash L, and then that puts this cell that's on the green cursor into the dimension game of life snake. And I'm going to do that for the others. So I'm going to navigate on the left to the two and on the right here. So I want to make a rank going forward. And I'm just going to put the first nine cells on the snake. OK, so let's do a connect to the right. OK, and the same thing, connect to the right. OK, so now I have the 25 numbers on the snake dimension. OK, so think of it as the snake wrapping itself around a tail. OK, but now what I want to do is define, um, yeah, so we're going to now put these cells that are on the snake dimension into the x-axis and y-axis. So starting in the center, I want the 1 to be connected. So what I'm going to do is change my x dimension here to the x-axis. And what I want to connect is in the left pane, I want dimension 1 to be the snake dimension. So I'm going to go back to the number 1 and I'm going to change the x to the snake dimension. Whoops. And do shift x, 2, 3, and the snake. OK. So what I want is the x-axis to start with a 1, which is the middle cell. So, And I'm going to do the y-axis as well on dimension. OK, on the right, I'm going to change the y-axis to dimension y-axis. OK, so the 1 is going to be the first cell on the x-axis and y-axis. 
So I'm going to do a connect to the right. And um, if I move here, this is also on the Y axis. So I'm going to connect the same cell below. So it is on the Y axis. So then <clears throat> if I change my X to the Y axis, it's interesting. Okay, it's pointing to itself. But what I want to do is go to the right. So cell two is to the right of the one. So I'm going to connect the two to the right on the x-axis. Okay. So now we're going to go vertically and connect the three below the two. So this is the functionality that any ZZ structure should have, the ability to create cells, create dimensions, and put cells on dimensions connected following the rules of um, creating ranks. So now I'm going to create a vertical rank from two to three going from the on. Okay, so taking the three from the snake dimension and putting it on the y axis. But the three is in every dimension. The snake is just a convenience, which I'll use for navigating around as I'm calculating. Okay, so now let's do a new cell below it, the three. Now we don't want a new cell, we want to um, do a slash and below. Okay, so now we have the y-axis has a rank going from two to three. And just think of it as a line segment with two points, a two and a three. And um, the fact that we're looking at it vertically doesn't matter, it's just a sequence of points, nodes connected by lines. So it's also a graph. So now let's go left. So we're going to, on the x-axis, I'm going to create a rank going in the negward direction, the negative. So um, we're going to go to the 4 on the right and connect it to the left, slash j creates it there. OK, so now let's go left again. Now what we're going to do is put the 5 to the left of the 4, slash j. OK, now I'm going to then go up. And I'll show you something interesting in a minute. So let's do a new cell. The 6 is above it. Whoops, I didn't want a new cell. So I'm going to hit the apostrophe to excise it. OK, so I want to slash connect to the cell 6. Now let's navigate. I'm going to go down, OK, over here. OK, so here I can navigate down. I can navigate left. I can navigate up. Um, OK, you'll see this better when we have the rest of them. OK, now I'm going to connect the 7. Whoops, slash u. Okay, let's do eight and nine. Okay, now watch how this works as I navigate. <clears throat> I'm in a row view. So it's showing the rows, and then the y-axis is any cells connected, and then going in a row view to the left. So the y-axis from 2 goes down to 3, but 2 is not connected to 9 yet. So now if I go down to 3, um, we're going to walk over. Now this 4, it's only connected on the left and the right. See, there's no cell above the 4. So now we go to the 5. It has a cell above it on the y-axis in the negward direction. Now, yeah, so positive and negative on the y-axis are reversed from Cartesian. So like this is going negative and this is going positive. Okay, so 
So notice this navigation structure in row view. Okay, so then we could see this cell five, which is called the accursed cell. And row view shows all the rows to the right of it. And then the y-axis going up. So we need to be able to nav navigate to cells like this. And um, the data structure should make this easy and quick. Okay, so now six is connected vertically and we're in row view, so we're showing the rows. Now seven is connected, um, it's a corner here. And we go to the right at here and that's all we have so far. The nine's not connected to anything yet, but we could get back here to the one. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at the column view. I'm gonna change the view on the right to column. Now we're primarily looking at columns. So we're on this x-axis. Now here is a cell two that has a neighbor below it in a column. And then when I move down here, it's gonna show the row, but it's, as it finds the row, it's gonna show any columns that are connected to it. And here, seven has connections on the x-axis, so it shows it there. It's just a different way of structuring, of displaying the data. And that's a thing that's very important, is that um, the view is just a presentation layer. The data never changes underneath it. So there are other views, like a vanishing view, which is nice to see as you're walking through here what's happening. So you can see the snake a little better. And then there's stretch vanishing, which just um, makes the width of the cell fit the text. So as I walk here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you can see the snake, okay? Let's go back to row view. Okay. Now, in the game of life, I want a cell to be easily navigable to its neighbors. So like this one on the x-axis, I could get to the two, but I also want to be able to get to this uh, six, okay? So from the six, I want to be able to get to the one on the x-axis. So I'm gonna move my green cursor back to the one, okay? And I'm going to slash L to connect the six to the one, okay? So now from the one, I could see the six and I could see the two. Now on the vertical axis, I want the uh, one to be able to see um, who's above it. So who is above the one? So the four is below it and the eight is above it. Okay, so what I want to do is connect the one to the four below it. So slash comma. And then I want to see just yeah the eight above it. So let's go back to the one. Okay, slash I. Okay, so the other point of zigzag is the user should be able to make any arbitrary connections among the cells in any dimension as long as they follow the rule. The rule is that each cell can only have a left partner and a right partner. So the one in the x-axis dimension can only have a left and a right. The one in the y-axis can only have this. And in the snake dimension, you can see that it has a left here and a right here to the two, okay. Now let's just do this for each cell to find, make sure that they're connected in the X and Y axes. So on the two, I need to connect it above to the nine. So I'm gonna move the green cursor to the nine and connect it above, okay. The three is already connected, the four. Oh wow, look at that. So the one is connected to the eight bone. So you could have rings, look at that. <laughs> okay, so you, there are some surprising things that you find as you work with this. So I'm on the blue cursor. Um, the four has its vertical neighbors. So starting at one, the four has a one and, uh, all right. I think there was an inadvertent 
than I did now. All right. Break down. Yeah. Okay, I broke the connection that was below it because I didn't want that. There was an extraneous connection. Okay, so the four is already connected, the five is already connected, the six is connected, the seven and eight and nine, but from the eight can you get down? Yeah, the nine you can get down. Okay, so now we have our numbers in the snake and we can um, yeah, imagine that we put um, a glider, one, two, these five cells here, you would make a glider. Now, um, let's continue expanding the grid. So following the snake pattern, going to the right and the round, we're going to go up to 25. So the next cell, 10, has to be to the right of it. Okay, and then we're going to... Uh, 11 is below it. Okay, now just for orientation's sake, that, so the 9 is the top, then the 12 would be the third cell, and then the 13 below it. Okay, so the, the 12 has to go below the 11, and the 13 goes below there. Okay, now we're going to go left. The 14, we're going to connect left. Whoops, undo. 14, connect left, and then the 15. Okay, we need five cells down here. 16. And 17. Then we're going to go up four cells, 18. Okay, so we ultimately need to connect all these cells, but notice the same navigation. So like starting here, we could get to 10 and then we go around and then we could get down here and then when we get to that corner, we could see the top. So this is an arbitrary structure called a snake. I'm calling it a snake. It's connecting this three by three grid to all the cells that need to be evaluated in order to determine the number of neighbors of that cell. So let's uh, do these connections. So I'm going to connect 11 to the left, but what is on the left? It's the number 2. So let's go back on the x cursor to a 2, and um, go here to 11, and connect left. OK, so we could get to, from the 11 to a 2. Now notice how. When I go here, the cells that are available pop in. And let's look at it in column view. Okay, view is column. Okay, 11, 12, 13. And then, you know, you can see that. Okay, so that's a test case, the navigation in the snake structure, which will get you a lot of value. And then connecting from a cell here. So from the 12, we actually want to connect to a 3. So being able to navigate like this and connect to the left. OK. Good. Now we're going to see from the 13, we can only get to those two cells. But from the 14, we want to go up to the 3. So I want to be able to connect up. So see, I could connect to the 3 because it's in a different dimension. So this 12 is connected to the 3 in the x-axis, and the 14 is connected to the 3 in the y-axis. So these cells need to behave this way, where any cell can be connected in any dimension. So here, this x-axis can connect it here and here. The y-axis can connect it here and here. OK, let me finish this. So we want the 4 to be above the 15, and then we want the 5 to be above the 16. Okay, And then we want uh, the 18 to be on the right. Okay, so like from the 5, we, okay, let's just do make it easy. We're going to create connect 
to the right on the x-axis. Okay, so like to find the neighbors of five, you would check the nine cell, the eight cells around it. So you'd go up, you'd go down. Okay, so we have to finish this first. Let's connect this to the six. Okay, so let's look at that example again. To find the neighbors of five, in the y-axis you go up and you go down, and then in the x-axis you go right and you go left, and then you choose one of the directions. So say that you chose x, you want to go up and down in the y-axis from that cell, and then from the negative cell here you want to go up and down. And here up is negative and down is positive. Okay. So 18 neg word gets you 19, 18 pos word goes to 17. Okay, because if you did that, uh, interesting, <laughs> not counterintuitive. All right. So from this 20, you want to get to the 7. From the 21, 21's already fully connected. 22, we want to get down to the 7, so we're going to connect it down. All right, so beautiful how the uh, things fly in. So it looks like a spreadsheet, but it's not a spreadsheet. It's a snake, a snake sheet. <laughs> okay, 23. See, I can't go down yet, but I could connect it to the 8 down. So there needs to be logic if you build this game of life that when you create a snake, a new wraparound snake, you need to go around that snake and connect it to the cells. So you need like two pointers following the cells. So like you have a pointer here, would follow these going down around, and then you'd connect the cells here around it. To the pointer here. It's like you get to the 24, you, your other cursor would be on the 9, so you're, you put that there and then you connect down. So that's creating a link. Okay, and then the last one are going to link down to the 10. Okay, good. So look what we have, a navigable 5x5 five five grid. Okay, so this is a good test case for um, seeing if your system can do this. Okay, so this will allow us to, um, so the API functions that you would need in this structure, you need to get the status of a cell if it's alive or dead. So like say I put a star to indicate it's alive. So like um, I'm just doing this as a, an example here to just show, so say I wanted to make a glider so this would have a status of alive, and then the six needs a status of alive, and then the five, four, and three. Okay. Okay, so this status could be another dimension called generation. So like generation zero can be this snake with these statuses. Then generation one would be after you calculate the neighbors to show the new pattern, the next phase of the glider. And that could be a generation, uh, you would add that to a pause word in the generation direction. So it's like another copy of the snake. Now, when your snake grows beyond the five by five matrix, you would need to go to the next level of the snake and then create 26 going all the way around to 49. Okay. So I'm gonna stop with this uh, um, structure and then go to a spreadsheet to show how I envision it could be created in um, a decentralized data structure as a test case for the system we're building.